Hey, Philip. Hello. How you doing? This is Vogue. We're here to ask you some questions. Mm, okay, but uh, first, I need some coffee. Ah, uh, that is better? better. Yes, much better. Okay, where are we right now? We are inside Stevenson Motor Co. This is our shop. Uh, you've probably seen it from uh, other videos that we have out there, but uh, yeah, this is our beautiful space that we work in. You may have noticed also that we have a new addition to our shop, a new hoist. So. Uh that's exciting. So how did you first get into minis? I bought one as a, uh, a laugh, kind of. I had a lot of cars and I bought one because I always wanted one after watching Mr. Bean and uh, I thought it would be a fun car to have and then after I bought it I just fell in love and next thing you know we're here. What happened to your first mini? Uh, first mini got built by myself and then eventually I wanted to upgrade the chassis so I took all the internal parts out, sold the chassis to someone who's actually rebuilt it now beautifully um, and then I took all the internal parts, I put it into another shell and then I sold that shell so now I'm miniless. Okay, uh, can we go see what Chris is up to and I'll ask you the next question? Sure, yeah. Uh, what do you think is the most important upgrade to a mini, if that's a fair question? I would say the most important upgrade would be suspension because minis are amazing handling cars but the suspension wears out because they're old and one of the things that we do the most in the shop here is suspension work so it makes the biggest difference if your car has new suspension uh, you'd be amazed how nice uh, a mini can handle. What are the best first upgrades for a mini? Say so you just bought it uh, first week of ownership. Probably maintenance. Do oil change, valve adjustment, adjust your brakes, bleed your brakes, just kind of a once over. Um, that's a really important thing not to overlook. Okay. Uh, what is the best way to make your Mini fast? Change the engine. Yeah. So this is an example of one that we're doing. You can make a Mini pretty quick with uh, an A-series engine, factory engine, uh, but to really get power out of them you do have to uh, do an engine swap and this one here we're doing a Honda D16 engine. Um, uh, this is the preferred engine that we do. Uh, D series fits really nice in the car. I've also got a pickup truck outside maybe we can look at after that's got the, the engine. Actually there's an engine sitting right over here. You can see. So this is what comes out. This is the gross mini engine covered in oil as they usually are. And then hiding over here This is a freshly rebuilt D-Series engine. All aluminum, single overhead cam, 16 valve, lighter, faster, better, five speeds. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is about the recent plumbing video. Do you have any particular views on fixing lines to the body? For example, best use of P-clips, do you go for with cushioning or without cushioning? Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you actually, if you come over here, there's uh, my favorite off the shelf ones are these. They're not cheap. This is a notch head clip. Um, and they, uh, they can be used to attach something to the body and also to another hose. They're really cool. I'll show you one here. So they look like that. And they come in all different sizes. This is for a really big line here. Um, and they've got a little hex head here. So when you put a, a bolt in, you can tighten it from the back side without needing to get to this side. Uh, and the bolt can't come out when the line is clipped in and you attach it. And because it's a single point, you can turn it like this. So the line can, can uh, align to however you, you want the line. And also, uh, you can bolt them together. So you can bolt two like that and then you can have two lines going like this way or any, three, whatever you want to do. So that's uh, the best, I would say, that I've found to, um, to, to do uh, that kind of thing. Uh, they are expensive, like I said, um, so a lot of people will end up using, you know, P-clips kind of like this. Uh, these work perfectly fine, but they just they look a little bit um, homebrew, you know, you wouldn't see this on, a, on an OEM and that kind of application. Um, but because the, the line, um, the, the notch head clips are kind of expensive, we've actually kind of made our own. I can show you over here. Because we have a 3D printer, we were able to design our own. And this is what we're currently using on all of our cars. 
Here, there's a variety of them. So these are all 3D printed. So we've got ones here, single line, different sizes. Oh, turned on my cell phone. How unprofessional. And then these ones here are dual. So this one's a quarter and five sixteenths. Anyways, so this is what we're using now, 3D printed versions that we make ourselves. Very cool. What's the best damper for the Mini, in your opinion? The best off-the-shelf damper that is reasonably priced, I would say, uh, and we've tried every single one of them, I would say is the Bilstein. Um, I have actually just ordered, I got about six sets in the shop right now because every car that comes in here gets Bilstein shocks. It's the perfect balance between um, being firm enough to feel sporty, uh, but well damped, that allows suspension to actually move. It's not crashy. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I've tried, I've tried all of them. Uh, KYBs are really good as well. If you want kind of factory ride, they have like three levels of KYBs. I would go with KYBs, Japanese made, uh, Bilstein's obviously always of quality. So, but I would say definitely the Bilstein's. How do you find the time to work on cars with your other commitments to Maroon 5? <laughs> Well, you know, you gotta compromise time, and this is why we have Chris, he does most of the work. <laughs> what carburetors do you rate the best uh, between, say, HIF, Twin SU, and HS4? The HIF, I would say, is the best. It's the newest, newest tech. Um, it uh, is a bigger size. I mean, you can get um, one and three quarter inch HS style, but the HIF 44, 44 mil, uh, is a good size for 1275 or even bigger. Um, and then one nice thing is because the float bowl is located in the middle, not off to the side, uh, it tends to have less fuel starvation issues. The earlier styles, um, sometimes when you go around a fast corner, I can't remember if it's a left or a right hand corner, depending on how the float's set up, it can go lean or go rich and you can even get bogging if the carb's not set up properly. So HAF is definitely the way to go. Mm. Name a great road trip snack. Road trip snack. Gotta be beef jerky. Come on. Is there truly a massive difference between 10 inch, 12 inch, and 13 inch wheels? And uh, how does each size affect drivability? Mm, yeah, um, I mean, here at the shop, we like to do 10 inch uh, wheels on, on all the cars. Uh, tens are what the minis came with. They are what the minis were designed with. Um, so it not only is it a part of the minis kind of uh, history and culture and aesthetic, um, but because the Mini has such short suspension travel, most of the suspension is actually in the sidewall of the tire. And the bigger the diameter of the wheel you go uh, to fit within the wheel arch, the smaller the diameter of the tire, and you lose some of that squish. Um, so the, the ride suffers from that. Uh, the other thing is that when you get a bigger and bigger wheel, they get heavier, um, when, especially when you get up to a 13 inch wheel. Um, they, uh, you can have some issues with um, turning, you know, like you have to get a, a limited rack. Um, and it's just cool to have a car that has 10 inch wheels. It's one of those things that no other car has, so um, why not run it with the 10s? Any key areas to target for reducing interior noise? Uh, big one, just sound ending, um, add, add sound ending. We like the stick on stuff, kind of like uh, it's got in this car here. Um, and then on top of that, you want to do like a thicker felt uh, underliner and then, a, uh, and then a carpet on top of that. Um, another big one would be t your engine steady. If you have a really stiff engine steady bushing, you create a lot of NVH in the car. Uh, but I would say the most important thing is to know that minis are pretty much never quiet. They're, they're not designed for that. They've always got wind noise. They've got wind buffeting. They've got NVH. So, uh, turn up the stereo or make a louder exhaust and kind of enjoy it for what it is. What's your favorite diff ratio? Uh, on the sports kind of build, the 344 is really good, but I would say probably my favorite would be a little bit um, less aggressive than that and with a bigger engine. So if you do like a 3.2 but you've got you know, a, a 1310 or 1380 and you can actually pull the 3.2 as if it was a 344, then you get both uh, the acceleration and you get uh, kind of a highway um, drivability that is not so much with the 344. Mm -hmm. How do you protect your Mini from rust? Uh, we use uh, this stuff here. This is um, a lanolin based, which is um, made from sheep's wool. It's called fluid film. It's been around for ages. You put it into a spray gun and you spray it underneath the car. Kind of coats everything. You do it once a year. 
so this is really good stuff. Uh, Mini's Rust, again, sort of like the sound deadening, or sort of like the, um, like the sound inside. You're going to have to be uh, just watchful and mindful of the, uh, of the rust as it comes out. So uh, just stay on top of it. Try not to drive it in the winter when they salt the roads, and, uh, and use some stuff like that will really help. What are your thoughts on the future of classic cars? Specifically say about how they should be used or preserved. I think there's going to be a large amount of people that are going to want to kind of have classic cars because all of the new cars are going to be electric, driverless, you know, they're going to be very different. So there's going to be sort of a, um, uh, almost like people playing old instruments or driving old, you know, old boats or old planes or something. There's something about having something old um, um, that will people will want to continue to um, enjoy. Uh, so I'm hoping that that stays alive and I think also a lot of people will also probably take classic cars like this and similar to what we're doing with either putting newer Honda engines in them, uh, give them a new life or even electric swaps um, so that you can have the, the aesthetic and kind of the, the, the pleasure of owning an old car but with some new car tech. If you were to daily a Mini, would you prefer a carbureted car, SPI or MPI? Um, the newer the better, you know, probably MPI. Um, but for me, I like carburetors. I, you know, I, I, I kind of want to do a, uh, a Honda swap, but actually put a carburetor on the Honda. Uh, but that's just me. I think for a daily driver, what I'd recommend um, for uh, you know someone off the street who's maybe not used to driving a classic car is to get an SPI or an MPI, something fuel injected. Um, I don't notice too much difference between the SPI and the MPI in terms of drivability. Uh, they both drive really well if they're tuned up and working well. So a fuel injected car. Mm. What are your favorite engines for a Mini? Doesn't have to be Mini necessarily, just favorite or tops. Yeah, well, um, the, the D16 for a front engine Honda swap is definitely the way to go. Um, I really like Mini engines just uh, you know, as they are. There's a lot of cool ones there. Um, and then something kind of more crazy like a, like a motorcycle swap, um, you know, similar to the one that you've probably seen from uh, Adams with the mid-engine motorcycle engine. I mean, it's hard to compete with. 12,000 RPM for uh, engine sound. How much difference does converting from front drums to discs really make? Uh, it makes a big difference. It's not so much the uh, first break, let's say. You know, you come around a corner and you break, and drums can actually break really well, especially if you have small tires. They'll even lock up the tires, so it's not so much about that. It's about repeatability and feel. And uh, the drum brakes, you know, they work good probably once, and then you go for the second break, and, you know, not as good and they need constant adjustment um, and then uh, and then just the, the brake feel is kind of not as linear it's not as um, consistent uh, if you get disc brakes it feels the same every time um, and especially with a good quality disc brake you'll never have them overheat mm -hmm. last question who is this video sponsored by this video is sponsored by Skillshare instead of looking at me while I tell you about Skillshare I know a guy who's got some skills Chris so Skillshare can help you make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and creativity. You have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is a great place to start. It's a learning community with thousands of courses from photography to illustration, uh, graphic design, freelancing, and more. Uh, maybe you're looking to start a small business on the side. Uh, this is how we started Seafs and Motor Co, by the way. Um, or wanted to make a career pivot. Uh, you're looking to learn uh, how to make maybe better photos of your mini. Uh, you'll probably find the right course on Skillshare. So consider it as a way of investing in yourself. With most of the lessons being less than 60 minutes long, it's easy to fit into your life. Uh, it's also ad-free and the courses ask you to put in some work, which has a massive benefit from learning and putting new skills to work. Many of you know the tech reviewer Marquez Brownlee, who has an excellent course called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, Edit with MKBHD. If you're interested to learn about video production, starting your own channel, we highly recommend you check this one out. So don't wait, scroll down the link in the description uh, and the first thousand people will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Sign up, take a look around, you'll be amazed at the cool new stuff you can learn right from the comfort of your home. Not bad, right? I didn't even read that from a script. Thanks again for watching. Uh, hopefully you like this video. Uh, if you have other questions, put them in the comments below. Maybe we'll do more videos like this. Just quickly answer some questions you've got. Um, yeah, check out all the stuff we've got on our website, seafsandmotorco.com. And uh, if you're interested in getting uh, your car worked on or a D-series build done, uh, shoot us an email. 
mail at stevesonmotorco.com. Yeah, we'll see you on the next one.